You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Hey people, I know you've been waiting with bated breath for the next part, the sequel to Jump Game. And now we're here with Jump Game 2. It's sort of similar to the previous problem, but they've added a little more and they've taken a little away actually. Let's just get straight into it to see what I mean. Jump game two. You're given an array ARR. You start from index zero and the element at each index denotes the maximum distance you can jump from that index. Now, this is just an explanation. Return the minimum number of jumps required. Oh, that's supposed to be a D required to reach the end of the array. It's one thing that's different from the previous question is that there are no zeros in the array, meaning we can never get stuck at a position. We can always reach the end of our array. Since there are only positive numbers, we can keep jumping forward. The question is, what's the minimum number of jumps? If the question was simply return true false, like in the previous question, which by the way, if you want to solve, make sure to click this caption right here. But if that was the question, all you'd have to do is return true straight away. That'd be nothing to the question. Just return true. However, here it's asking us to count the minimum number of steps. This is how our input looks like. Five denotes the number of elements in the array. And this is the array itself. We start from the first index, from index zero. And one means we can only move to one location. That is the very next index, index one. Once we move there, two tells us we can move to either index two or index three, any one of the two positions. Two is the maximum distance we can jump, but we can, don't have to jump all the way. Now, if we go to the next index, five makes sure that we hit the end straight away, which is why our minimum count is going to be three. One jump from zero to one, one jump from one to two or one to three, and the last jump to reach the end. And our sample output agrees with us. The screen is open, guys. You can do your thing. If you've got the solution, if you know how to do it, click the link in the description down below. We'll be back quickly. First, we're going to try to locate what elements can hit end, can hit the last element, which elements can reach the target element. And we're going to move on from there. So straight away from this, we can tell that one and two can't reach the last element. They can't reach seven. That is element zero and element one can't reach seven. However, Element two and three, that is five and six, can reach the last element. Now, one of these is very important and the other is absolutely redundant if we're following this approach. It's up to you to figure out which is which and why. Once you're able to glean that, you've got the solution straight away. You guys, the answer to my previous question is five. Five is the important element and six is the unimportant one. Why? Let's consider six. Now, six can reach seven in one step. In order to get to six, there has to be a previous element that leads to six. In this case, the previous element is two. However, two can reach five anyway, because you don't have to jump the entire way. You can stop in a previous element. So anything which reaches six will reach five first. And in the worst case scenario, you may need more jumps to reach six than you do to reach five. So we don't even consider the later elements. We consider the first element that can reach our target. In this case, that's five. Now what we do is we move our target to five and we repeat the same process. We go from element zero and we try to find which element can reach five. In this case, that's element two. And now we repeat the same process. Element one can reach the target element. Once they both converge, that is once target is equal to zero, we just display the total number of steps we've taken, the total number of jumps we've taken so far. Let's see the exact same concept at work in this array right here. Now our target is the final element. These are the three elements that can reach our target. We're only going to consider the very first element, that is three. Now three is our target, repeat the exact same process. And now that two is our target, repeat the same process a third time to get our final count as three. Again, in this case, in the very first iteration, when three, one, and one were the elements that were able to reach target, if we considered the element after three, that is to say one, 
it would actually take more steps than what we just calculated. Now that we've got that out of the way, the general algorithm, let's get into the coding bit of it. Right here, you can see the code. Our target is initially our last element, naturally. That's where we want to reach. And initially, we haven't jumped at all. Now, while our target is not equal to zero, while our target doesn't reach the beginning, we're going to do what we just discussed. We're going to run an I loop from zero to target. The moment we hit the first element that can reach target, we're going to make that element the target and we're going to break. Following that, we're going to run another I loop to the new target and keep doing so until target reaches zero. In the end, we simply return the number of jumps. Let's see if this works. A sample test case have been passed. And once we hit submit, it's been accepted. Guys, that's how you solve the problem. Jump game two. Hope you like my solution. If you did, hit the golden trio, guys. Like, subscribe, and the bell icon. And make sure to leave your comments down below. If you have a better approach, then I'd love to know. Then Vivek Kalur, guys. I'll see you all next time.